it's Katie Bang. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about ball pythons, which is her. She is a ball python and also I have my best friend live with me. Hi. And she's going to be helping me tell all the basics about ball pythons. And this is just stuff that if you're thinking about getting a ball python, you should definitely know. The ball python is one of the most common snakes in America and they originate from South Africa. <laughs> okay, so they also get their name ball python because when they're nervous or like some sort of new stimulus like comes to them, I guess. Sorry about my wording. But they tend to ball up with their head in the middle and that's where they really get their name. They're super um, docile snakes, rarely bite. Like I mean they can but like they're not going to unless you provoke them, like just get up in their mm -hmm. face, you know? Or you're feeding them and they have really bad aim. Yeah, that's happened. The next thing we want to talk about is morphs. And I remember when I was learning about snakes, this was so confusing because I was like, wait, is it the same snake? They're so different price range wise. And actually, it's all the same snake. The only difference is literally the pattern on them. Sasha is actually a leopard ball python. That's her morph. Um, a normal ball python you can get from anywhere from $20 to $60, but it really just depends on how common or uncommon their morph is. Yeah, also like the banana ball python morph used to go run for like $5,000 because it was like the new thing, but now they're about down to like $300. So it really just depends on your preference and the look that you want to go for and your price range for getting one. Some do come with genetic issues like the spider ball pythons. You always want to be careful and just make sure you do your research. Yeah, also they live a very long time, so if you want to get a ball python, be prepared to have this pet for at least 20 to 30 years, with good care, obviously, you don't want to get it, not take care of yeah. it, but yeah, so they live a long time, so really be prepared in this investment, because it's going to be with you for most of your life, too. Yeah, a lot of your life, yeah. like a third or fourth, the, yeah. depending on how healthy you are. Um, one other thing that I think is so interesting is girls are bigger than boys. Heck, Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> because... You should believe that. I will. Funny. Boys yeah. are usually bigger than girls in most species, but not in snakes. One thing about ball pythons is they're notoriously picky eaters. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you're monitoring everything in their environment a big mistake, or a common mistake that I see a lot of people make is not keep their humidity high enough. So always make sure that you're checking your ball pythons humidity, and then if you are, research on how to get your ball python to eat. A lot of them are known for only eating live and not going on frozen. So if you're not comfortable feeding live, like I'm not, I would make sure that you get from a breeder that has already switched the ball python over to frozen and done the hard part for you. For ball pythons, to figure out how much they need to eat, Always look at the roundest part of their body, the fattest part, and kind of judge what size, not snake, <laughs> mouse that they need to eat. So or rat. She, or rat. So she needs to eat a small rat. Probably, at, when she's an adult, she'll probably need a large rat just because she's a female and they get bigger than males, which we've already said. But, yeah. yeah, when you're getting a new snake, always talk to the breeder and ask what size that they take, and if they don't know, that's how you judge for really any snake, so this goes yeah, for any snake. That's a good fact to have. Now we want to show you the enclosure. So it's really cute and very pink because she's a pretty princess. So let's go look in her enclosure. Okay, so for ball pythons, actually a minimum size enclosure is about 40 gallons, but this is, um, I believe, 110 gallons because I'm a little bit extra when it comes to snakes. You can always do bigger. One thing you have to make sure is that you are making sure that their heat gradient is warm enough for them. Um, for her, she really likes this. As you can see, there's poles. This is a custom cage for her. And ball pythons are known to stay on the ground most of the time, but she actually really enjoys going on the little poles sometimes, so that's always cute. So yeah. Bye, Sasha. 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 <laughs> Alright, well, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I want to hear what's your favorite morph of ball pythons. So, like, tell us in the comments below. 
And today's future call out is animals are awesome. Thank you animals that are awesome. I appreciate you more than anything. And Oxer's whining. To everyone else, I appreciate you too. Subscribe to join our family. Callie, what do you have to say? Hello. <laughs> okay, bye.